in one of my previous videos I showed a little trick I use when I'm checking switching transformers to see if they're oscillating. What I did was I hooked an amp audio amplifier up to an inductive pickup coil, which I've got here, and I held it on top of the switching transformer. In this case you can hear it picking up the oscillations. Now what I failed to mention in that video is there are going to be times where this transformer is operating at a too high of a frequency for you to be able to hear using an inductive pickup coil like I did. In a case like that you'll want to use a uh, frequency counter or a meter that's got a frequency function on it like I've got here. Also this particular uh, device this transformer operates at two different frequencies. When it's in the standby mode it's putting out a much lower frequency but when you turn it on it'll switch over to a frequency that's too high for you to be able to detect with an audio output device. So in this case like I'm showing here you can just hold your meter probe right above the coil and even though I don't think it's giving me a very accurate reading it's enough to show me that it is oscillating. To get a more precise reading you'd want to make actual physical, con physical contact rather with one of the outputs although be careful where you put your probe, you don't want to hook it up to where it's uh, too high of a voltage when you're in the frequency mode here. Now, another little trick I use is sometimes I'll just wind myself a little coil like I've got here and I'll hold it near the uh, transformer as it's hooked to my meter probes. And the reason I do this, sometimes I find that the meter is picking up too much stray RF energy, uh, too many electromagnetic waves around a particular circuit. And I want to be able to pinpoint a particular transformer. So as you can see, I can just hold this coil near this um, transformer here, and it's being fed right into my meter, and it's showing me that it is indeed oscillating. And if I pull it away, it goes back to zero. Now here we're looking at a switching power supply for an LCD TV. In this case, I'm hooking a little inductive coil up to my meter probes, so it's not quite as sensitive in the frequency function. And you can see if I lay it just on top of this coil here, it allow me to pinpoint a particular coil. What I find sometimes is a problem if I just have the meter probe just floating in the air like this, it'll be so sensitive I, don't, I won't know which transformer is actually producing the oscillations. As you can see, my meter is working now and it's kind of far away from the coil. So, depending on how many turns you have, your coil will determine how sensitive your coil is when you're using it in the uh, frequency function. Another thing I was going to say, if you can't afford a meter that's got a frequency counter in it, you can also switch over to the microvolt scale and sometimes I find I'm able to um, hold a coil hooked to my probes on the microvolt scale and pick up a little something that way too. Again, we're just trying to determine if these switching transformers are oscillating as they're supposed to. One other trick for getting a quick peek at the activity in a switching transformer is to hold your oscilloscope probe right on top of the transformer although I prefer to use this method here where I wind a little coil and hang it across the probe. I'll let you see what this looks like here. Let me uh, zero this in on the scope. Okay, I'm going to take the uh, coil and I'm just going to put it near the switching transformer. As you can see, just by holding it near, I can actually see the activity. And so I know this transformer here is oscillating. I'm going to try a different transformer. That, that one's working too. What I was doing when you were looking at the oscilloscope was simply taking my scope probes with a coil at the end and moving it from one transformer to the other. And you were able to see a visual picture of what was going on inside the transformer, or at least a waveform. You can also use the oscilloscope or a frequency counter to see if your little transformers on your inverter board are oscillating. Although another little trick is to take a little neon light bulb like I've got on my hand here and sometimes you can hold it right on the output wires going to the uh, light itself or near the transformer. I don't know if it'll work on every inverter board, but I found that useful sometimes. Speaking of backlights on LCD TVs, I'm going to show you a couple little service tricks here you might find useful. A lot of times I've had people bring me televisions, LCD TVs that is, that uh, don't have a picture. And one of the first things I like to do before I even pull the back off is try to determine what the problem is because if it's something too abstract I may not want to get involved with it. But one little trick you can do is to uh, look through the little vent holes on the back of the TV while you're turning the power on. If you see a flash of light that comes on just for a second and then it goes off, 
that generally indicates that you're having problems with your inverter board and or your cold cathode fluorescent lamps. And the reason the TV will uh, come on for a second and go back off, if the power supply senses a problem, it can actually cause the inverter board to go into shutdown. Another common problem is where, say, you have a TV that comes in and there's no picture. Um, it doesn't mean your backlight's malfunctioning. Sometimes you can tell just by looking through the vent holes on the back of the backlight's working, or sometimes you can just simply put a little pressure with your hand. Just don't push too hard or you'll break the screen. But by putting a little pressure, what you're doing is you're polarizing the liquid crystal and you're allowing the light to pass through it. I showed some of this in one of my other videos, but here we've got a liquid crystal clock and I pulled off the two polarizing lenses so you can get a better idea how it, you're able to block the light or allow it to pass through depending on the polarization of the crystal. You can see when I push this, the effect it has on the light. For those of you that don't know, I do have a website now at tvrepairinfo.com. There you'll find a directory to all the different videos I've produced on TV Repair so far. I've also got a lot of places that sell parts, so if you're looking for a part for your TV, or a whole board, there's some companies I've listed that sell whole boards.